Hi, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is my monthly musings video. So this is where I talk about things I've watched on TV, books I've read, anything that struck my fancy basically during the month of March and decks I've used. But this video is probably gonna be short and sweet because I really, I don't have that much to share <laughs> for my month of March. I'm glad this month is done. It went kind of quickly and I am ready for full blown spring and warm weather and open windows. Um, we had some freak temperatures where it was 70s and the upper 60s and that is not common but we are right back down to the 30s and 40s and I'm over it. I'm over it and I am ready for nicer weather. So as far as what I got up to movie wise or book wise, we watched a lot of stuff in the month of March, but I really wasn't thrilled with a lot of the stuff we watched. So the one movie I am going to mention that I absolutely loved, I thought it was so cute, and that's Wonka with Timothy, is it Chalamet? Chalamet, something like that. Um, as the lead, it was so good. I loved it so much. And it really did look like a prequel to the original Wonka, or original um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with um, Gene Wilder. So not the Johnny Depp one but I really did enjoy it. I didn't journal this month at all. The only thing I did was write down some things in regards to my omen days that I've talked about in other videos before, but that was it. Now I did use decks, but I didn't, um, I didn't journal any of it. I just didn't feel the readings that I were, I was doing needed to be, reflected on at a later date. Um, I used Influence of the Angels, which you already saw that video. I did that whole uh, comparison video between those three decks. I would use that in the evening and pull a card from it. I finally put that deck away in my cupboard. I'm, I need to move on um, and start using something else. But the other deck that I used for myself to do some really quick readings with is the Unfolding Path Tarot by Athene Noctua, I believe is how you say the name. I enjoyed this deck so much. And even though I bought it a year ago, um, maybe it hasn't been a full year, whenever it came out mass market is when I had picked this up. I didn't really get to use it until this past month because I was trying to work my way through decks that I already had. And I enjoyed this deck immensely. It has a very lovely energy to it. And I see it compared to the Lightseer's Tarot a lot. And for me personally, my own personal opinions, I don't think it has the same energy as my Lightseer's Tarot. And I'm a big Lightseer's fan. I uh, have a couple copies of the Light Sears deck and this deck holds a different energy and reads a completely different way for me. And um, so I don't feel like they can compete with each other or do compete with each other in my collection. I love the facial expressions on this deck. Um, And I really got a lot from that, looking at the facial ex expressions when I was doing certain readings. So this is a really um, great one and is definitely going to be a staple that I go to when I'm wanting to do some readings for myself. So this was really enjoyable. Um, and I thought it was perfect kind of for this time of year where we're transitioning out of that winter and into that spring energy with, you know, it has a little bit of a lighter color palette to it and everything. And um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. 
I don't even think I used an Oracle deck uh, for myself, except that Magic of Spirit or Magic of You or whatever that one's called that I showed last month. That one's still sitting out on my table. I might have pulled a couple cards from that. I did very minimal readings for myself. I just was not, I, I was not feeling it. I, I just, I wasn't. But one thing I did happen to start in the month of March was I started a deck deep dive with a friend, fellow tarot tuber on the unfinished business um, tarot, the independent deck by MJ Colonane and I don't know how I feel about this deck now. Um, at the time I'm filming this, we have gone through three sections of the deck. We have two of the minors um, left. Swords and Pentacles, I think, is what we have left to go through. And I really do. I feel completely differently about this deck compared to when I did the walkthrough. I remember, I think, briefly mentioning in the walkthrough of the deck of, I wondered if reading these stories about how these um, spirits passed away would come into play or affect the reading. And that's what we're doing together. We're reading through each story in the guidebook and looking at the cards and discussing some of the stories and um, how we feel about them and different things like that. And then we've picked different activities to do with it, like pairings and some readings and that sort of thing. And now that I know the stories of three or almost three quarters of the guidebook, I feel completely different about the cards. Because when I was trying to do readings for myself now, those stories were prominent in my head. And my frustration has grown with this deck because of that. And the, po the fact that I don't have that additional guidebook that she was working on to add to these stories. And uh, I think like... Um, mentioned like who is related to who or something along those lines. The fact that we don't even have that book yet is another frustration that I have in regards to this deck. So when I am done, which will be in two weeks with this deck, I am going to tuck it away in the back of a cupboard and get some space from it because I feel like maybe if I get away from it, and don't remember the stories as much anymore and then go back to it, maybe I'll feel differently um, than I do now because I'm having a really difficult time now with this deck and separating out um, what's been written about every one of these characters on these cards. I'm not able to separate it when I read now. So the readings in turn make no sense to me. I mean, I could sit there and do, you know, a traditional four of pentacles, meaning a traditional five of wands. But then when you add that other layer into it, it's just, I, I don't, I'm not liking it. And we're not getting along right now. So... Um, I'm going to see how this ends up playing out for me in the long run. Um, you know, it's kind of like uh, I've spoken of it before when I got the uh, first edition of the Game of Thrones tarot deck in. That deck and I did not get along. I adore and love the Game of Thrones series, watched every single episode, became invested in the characters in that series, and then I went to use that deck and we had an issue with each other. So I had to put it away. I had to put it away for like a year and then come back to it and approach it in a whole different manner. And I adore that Game of Thrones deck now. And I'm kind of feeling 
like this is what's going to happen with this deck. I need to get some space after I finish this deep dive with it. I need to get some space from these stories of these characters because right now it's it's a no-go for me. I still think the artwork is lovely. I mean, I really do like MJ's artwork. Um, I'm not bashing the deck in any way. I think, you know, she did exactly what she set out to do with these ghosts having this, you know, unfinished business, this tale of tragedy, basically. Um, and maybe they feel like they're missing something that they didn't get to accomplish or whatever. But yeah, it's just, um, right now it's just not for me. So let's talk about the decks that I played around with in my tiny private client group. And what I did with them in the month of March was I focused on um, time and how much time we waste um, in a day, in a week, in a month or whatever, and use this use these three decks to bring about the lessons that we could learn from that wasted time. So this, let me get the boxes. This deck here is the Oracle of Seven Energies by Colette Baron Reed. This deck over here is the Sacred Traveler Oracle Cards by Denise Lynn. And the tarot deck in the middle is the, I don't have the box. It's the, um, oh, is it the Enchanted Soul Tarot um, by Yasmin somebody? I'll put it um, on the screen because I am forgetting right now. So what I did was I used this deck for the beginning of the week and this card represented where we may be wasting time. So these were some cards that came out together. So the ears wide open started the week out and what I had said about that was wasting time not listening and by that we are either talking over the person or we're not in a space to listen to them, or, you know, we're um, not open to hearing, you know, and, and we waste a lot of time through miscommunication because of that, basically. So then midweek, I would like, I would pull three cards, and these were the three cards that came out of, you know, what, what was this original card like trying to teach us? And so with the Ten of Cups, Queen of Cups, and Page of Swords, um, I s said something along the lines of we were being, um, we were wanting our partner, our coworker, our uh, children, whoever, to basically read our minds, to know what we wanted without having to verbalize what we wanted. So, which in turn caused more miscommunication. And the longer we would go wanting people to read our minds, to meet our needs, the more frustrated and um, the more turmoil would be caused in those type of relationships. And so the end of the week was the Sacred Traveler Oracle and it was a breaking trail for the week of these cards. And um, it was basically, you know, finally stepping into speaking up for yourself and uh, stating what it was that you were needing or what it was that you were wanting or, or whatever it was from the person that you were communicating with and being more open and honest about what your needs were and being open to listening to what their needs were in turn. Um, so each week it was something different. It was some different sort of, you know, waste of time or area of our life that we needed to look at if we were wasting time uh, during or in that um, scenario. So the thing though, I'm going to say about that is I thought that the readings were super heavy for the month of March um, looking at those aspects and I even brought that up to my client I'm like these readings are like deep and heavy so somebody in the group 
one of us needed to, you know, hear that. So I'm hoping that those messages got through in the way that they needed to get through. But I'm doing something fun for them in the month of April where they had to pick certain things out ahead of time and I geared all the guidance um, in the next month around that. So I'll talk more about that next month. But these decks did, uh, they paired very well with each other. They look really nice together also. I... My thoughts on this Oracle of Seven Energies is still out. I am not sure exactly how I feel um, about this deck yet. I, I mean, I like it. Then I'm like, I don't know about it. And, and I'm just, I'm flip-flopping back and forth with it. Um, I like some of her other decks better. So yeah, I'm not really sure how I feel about the Oracle of Seven Energies. So let's talk about a couple decks that I got in at the very end of the month when I took advantage of the US game sale. I was really good and I didn't order anything from Llewellyn um, this month. I shocked myself. I only ordered from US games. And I finally got in the Ehrenberg Tarot. I've been wanting this tarot when they started um, showing it. It's going to be semi in order because I started looking through it. Um, I watched that video that Kelsey and Benny did. What's her channel? Is it Hogue Tarot? I don't know how to say that. Um, talking about this deck and they walk through their thoughts on the first five cards. I really enjoyed that because I'm excited about finally getting around or getting a chance to use this deck. But I just love this whole different perspective on all of this. And um, I like what they were saying about the way the eyes were looking at you on like the first five cards and and that sort of thing. So I, I wanna see how this feels for me when I finally get around to using it. The next deck I got in from US Games is Old Style Tarot created by Alexander Ray. Oh my gosh, this deck, I've seen a few walkthroughs on this deck now and I just fell in love with it immediately. I love this old world style images and, you know, it just feels like it transports me to another time and everything. And I kind of feel like this would be a good ancestors deck. But as you can see, I haven't even read with it yet. They, I've only got these not that long ago, maybe five days ago. So I haven't really done anything with it. Um, this does put me in mind a little bit of my Tarot Muha deck, but I think it's different enough that it won't like, you know, compete with each other. And I'm not, I'm not getting rid of that uh, Tarot Muha anyway. This would be a very good spring deck also. It just has that um, spring vibe energy to it. So I haven't worked with it yet. Can't say much more than what I just said about it, but I am really, really looking forward to it. That's cool. Really looking forward to using it. The last deck I got in from US Games is this Aquarian Tarot. This is the new release that has the Psychic Tarot guidebook in it. This is by um, the deck is by David Palladini. I just posted a reel, but the song I chose to pair up with this on my Instagram was Foreigners Cold as Ice. So I don't know if anybody here is old enough to remember that song. You know, you can let me know in the comments below. I loved that song when it first came out. What was that, late 70s? I remember being on the radio, hear it in the car all the time. But I took this deck out, unboxed it, 
and I started flipping through the cards and that song came to mind immediately. And this is exactly the vibe of this deck. It is like cold as it just feels frigid to me. So it comes with this larger guidebook, the Psychic Tarot. And I, I haven't even really looked at this deck or I mean this book yet. So um, I can't really speak to, you know, developing your psychic abilities and um, anything about that. But I am curious to read it. And then of course your meanings are here on the back. This deck really has that frigid, ice cold vibe to it. I don't know if it's because their faces are all white and therefore that's the um, vibe my mind is throwing upon this deck, but that's just what it feels like to me. And I'm really really going to be curious to see if it reads in that way. I've already determined <laughs> that this deck is a she. <laughs> oh, I know, I'm personifying, I know. No, I'm not delusional. <laughs> I heard that <laughs> on another video about if you, you know, saw your deck as a person or um, anything like that sort that that was delusional thinking. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I know where the messages come from. I don't believe they come out of these cards, you know, so at least that's my thought process anyway, but I guess to each his own, but yeah, it just has that frigid chill to it. So we will see how this ends up reading for me. So that's it. I said short and sweet is today's video because I didn't really have that much going on in my practice for the month of March. So tell me about your practice below. I mean, did you do more than I did? Anybody could have done more than I did with as little as I used the cards. And I'd really like to know your thoughts on that unfinished business tarot and your thoughts on the Aquarian tarot. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you being here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And until I see you next time, bye.